This is Rick Malone for the San Francisco Symphony. Sergei Prokofiev's ballet of Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet has a history almost as star-crossed as the title characters. He wrote it at a critical period in his life. It was 1932, and he had just made the decision to settle with his family back in Moscow after a decade of shuttling back and forth between that city and Paris. Unlike Igor Stravinsky, Prokofiev felt compelled to return to Russia, even after the difficulties he and other artists faced in the aftermath of the Russian Revolution. In short, he was homesick, but the move would give him some artistic stability as well. In Paris, audiences hated the works that were popular in Moscow, and vice versa. Prokofiev wanted very much to become part of Russian musical life again. Late in 1934, the Leningrad State Academic Theater commissioned Prokofiev to write a full-length ballet based on Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. A political shakeup in Leningrad caused the cancellation of the commission, but Moscow's Bolshoi Ballet stepped in and even provided Prokofiev with a country retreat where he could write in peace. Prokofiev finished the score in the fall of 1935, and rehearsals began immediately, but they were almost immediately canceled after the company decided it was impossible to dance to. The Leningrad Ballet School stepped in, but then they violated their contract as well, so the premiere took place at the Brno Opera in Czechoslovakia in 1938. The Kirov finally did produce it in Leningrad in 1940, but the choreographer cut and altered the score, inserting other Prokofiev music and reorchestrating some passages so the dancers could hear them better. Prokofiev was furious, but the opening was a huge success. In the middle of all of this, Prokofiev had put together an orchestral suite from the ballet in the hopes that it would persuade another company to pick up the full ballet after the Bolshoi dropped out. He wrote a second suite a year later and, eventually, a third suite in 1946. The suites were all conceived as concert offerings, with the scenes arranged according to musical rather than dramatic considerations. But the ballet as a whole has inspired arrangements by many others, including the San Francisco Symphony's music director, Michael Tilson Thomas. In 1996, he recorded his Romeo and Juliet suite with the symphony, and it won a Grammy Award for Best Orchestral Performance. It was the first of their Grammy Awards together, numbering 11 as of 2010. The Montagues and Capulets sets the scene on a street in Verona, where the two feuding families are engaged in a brawl. Unbeknownst to either of the families, Romeo, a Montague, will fall in love with Juliet, a Capulet, and the old family hatreds will cause the tragic end of these star-crossed young lovers. In The Young Juliet, we see the playful side of the heroine as she banters with her nurse. Masks is the music to which Romeo and his friends make their entrance at the Capulet's ball. They are masked, of course, and it's from behind the mask that Romeo first sees and woos Juliet.
From here, we move to the Capulet's garden. The balcony scene finds Juliet standing in the moonlight. Romeo appears, and they swear their devotion to each other. Love music blooms and rises into the night toward a musical climax and a gentle ending as dawn breaks. The Street Awakens is actually one of the first scenes in the ballet. In this position in the suite, it's a light-hearted foil to the gently impassioned music of the balcony scene. After Romeo and Juliet are secretly wed, Romeo's friends perform a rowdy folk dance. Followed by a dance with mandolins. Once again, the mood is broken by a fight between members of the two warring families, which precipitates the tragedy. Romeo's friend Mercutio and Juliet's cousin Tybalt encounter each other on the street. Tempers reach boiling point and Tybalt challenges Romeo, who refuses to accept. Mercutio is more rash. He and Tybalt duel and Mercutio dies. Romeo flies into a rage, takes up Mercutio's sword and avenges his friend in the death of Tybalt. Romeo goes into exile for having committed the murder. Meanwhile, Friar Lawrence, who had married them, has given Juliet a potion that has put her into a death-like trance. His plan is that Romeo will join her at graveside and that when she awakens, they will escape together. But Romeo has never received the friar's message detailing the plan. Romeo at Juliet's grave finds the hero in his beloved's crypt. Despairing over Juliet, he plunges his dagger into his heart, and Juliet, awakening from her sleep, finds Romeo dead and kills herself. Michael Tilson Thomas has called the ballet a great lyrical symphonic epic, one in which Prokofiev used his unique gift for beautiful melody to give life to all the characters. Definite motifs are identified with those characters and also with specific emotions, emotions such as innocence, love, anger, jealousy, and despair. It is one of the greatest musical interpretations of Shakespeare's works, and despite its difficult beginnings, one of Prokofiev's most popular scores.
This is Rick Malone for the San Francisco Symphony.